Halligans, who you're about to see, are street entertainers. They are paid to entertain. They have been invited, often hundreds of kilometres. They travel by train or by rickshaw to a particular village. They'll be paid by the headman of the village to perform, but they'll also need to receive donations from the audience. They have lots of different stories in their repertoire. And the audience know all the stories. The audience requests the stories. And what they're interested in is not what happens next, as much as how the story is conveyed, what these particular performers are bringing out of the story, what slant they bring to the story, what moments they linger on, what moments they emphasise. So, so they have lots of different kinds of stories, from the poignant to the horrific, but tonight they're going to perform sections from an epic story that would take about an hour and a half to perform if they did the whole thing um, continuously. So we've asked them to lift certain sections from the story uh, to show you the different moods that they can evoke <coughs> um, during the course of the tale. The story concerns a woman whose name is Kumula. Kumula, her name means orange. And in the story, Kumula is married to a king who she discovers is obsessed with gambling. So she goes to him on, his wedding, on their wedding night. And she goes to their wedding bed and he says, we're going to play dice. <clears throat> I win, you go back to your father. And if you win, I go to the dungeon for three days. <laughs> so she begs him not to do this, but he insists and he says, if ever you ask me ever again not to play dice, then you're going straight back to your father. So they play dice, and she wins. He has to go to the dungeon for three days, but she talks him out of it, and they sleep together instead, and she gets pregnant. <laughs> so every night for six months, they play dice, and every night for six months, she wins. Now one night, one afternoon, one summer afternoon, she is uh, lying, sleeping in a temple, and there passes by a fairy woman, and the fairy woman sees this beautiful being lying, sleeping there. And the fairy woman thinks, who is this? The fairy woman discovers who it is and goes down into the underworld. And there she visits the king of the underworld, whose name is Jamraj. He's the villain of the piece. And she says, I've seen such a being on the earth. And he says, what is her name? And uh, the fairy woman says, her name is Komala. And Jamraj says, I am so filled with desire just from hearing her name. What would it be like if I were to touch her? I want to taste this orange. <laughs> so he sends the fairy woman back up. The fairy woman goes back down and says, she's six months pregnant. And Jamraj is furious. Jamraj says, I'll wait, I'll wait until she's given birth. <laughs> she gives birth. And then Jamraj, the king of the underworld, visits her husband in a dream. And the next morning, this husband of hers, the king, visits Kumala and says, we're going to play dice. And if I win, you go to the forest for 12 years. If you win, I dig a pit 30 acres wide. So they play dice. She wins. So the pit is dug. And once the pit is dug, another dream in the mind of the king, sent by Jamraj. And the king goes to his wife, Kumala, and he says, You know, this pit will only ever be a hole. It will never be a lake. Until you climb down into the hole, walk to the centre of the hole, and pour a pot of water into the ground. And if you do this, water will rise from the ground, and then it will be a lake. She says, if I do this, I'll die. He says, no, you won't die. She says, the, the, the pit is 30 acres wide. If I pour the water into the ground, the water will rise, and then I will drown. He says, no, you will not drown. You will not drown. She's convinced she's going to die. She thinks, if only I could call for help from my brothers, my seven brothers. And as she thinks this thought, a bird flies over her head. She calls down the bird. She writes out a note. She ties the note to the bird's foot. She sends the bird, and the bird flies towards the brothers. And as one of the brothers is stepping out of his home, he sees the bird approaching. He turns to his brothers, the, the other brothers, and he says, I'll kill that bird with my bow and arrow. So he looses an arrow from his bow, strikes the bird. But as soon as it strikes the bird, the bird cries out, What have you done? You've, you've killed me. I was bringing a message from your from your sister, I'm dying, Mother Kamala, help me, I'm dying. It tumbles to the ground and falls, 
and the brother has heard the cry of the bird. So the brother finds the note, reads the note, looks at the note, calls the other brothers, and they set off straight away to save Kongola from danger. But Jamraj, the king of the underworld, has tampered with their sense of time. They think they have plenty of time to reach the palace, but in fact, already Kongola has climbed down into the pit. Already Kongola is walking to the centre of the pit, and she's pouring the pot into the ground, and the ground is becoming muddy, and her feet are beginning to sink. And she is being pulled under the ground into the underworld by the king of the underworld. So that's the section of the story you're going to hear parts from. <laughs> I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to explain to you what parts you're going to see and hear. Um, the first thing that will happen is like all good street entertainers, they're going to play to gather an audience. Then the storyteller, someone in Malaga, will enter and he will dance. And he's dancing to get into character. He's dancing to get gather his powers, get, into, get energy. And when he stops, we're at the moment of the story when the king is thinking of taking a wife for the first time. And Islam Udin will put on a scarf and he will turn and speak to these two gentlemen here who have a dime, a co-actor in this, in this form. And Islam Udin, in the role of the king's mum, will say... King, I, I'm getting old. Soon I will die. I, I, want, I want you to take a wife. And at first, the chorus, the dying, they reply, we, we, I don't want to take a wife. I'm, I, not yet, maybe later. <laughs> and Islam Odin, as the king's mother, is saying, now, you must take a wife now. And so eventually, they agree. Now, what's wonderful about this Palagan art form is the way that roles switch very suddenly. The focus is always on Islam the storyteller. So as soon as the king agrees to take a wife, the roles switch over. And then Islam Udin is the king. And they are the king's mother. <laughs> and so Islam Udin will go down and say, I, I touch your feet, respect to you, mother. I, I will take a wife. I will take a wife. And then he stands up, and he bends down, and he shakes hands three times with the chorus. And once again, he's, he's changed role. And now... The king is speaking to the minister, and the king is saying to the minister, I want you to go and get a wife. I want you to find me a wife. Find me a wife. <laughs> and Islam Udin, he becomes the minister, and he takes the cushion, and this cushion plays so many roles in this performance as well. <laughs> the, the, the cushion becomes the horse of the minister, and the minister sets off, and Islam Udin is singing as the minister, which one of us is in charge? Is it me or is it you? Where are we going? Um, and also he's singing, um, rivers are passing by, mountains are passing by, forests are flashing by as I search for a wife. So the first thing that happened, music. Then it's the wooden dance, and then the passage of the story that I just explained. <laughs>
strikes them with his whip. And then he, he takes off a magical necklace and he looks through the necklace. The king of the underworld looks through this necklace and sees our world through the necklace. And sees that what they say, the fairy woman says, is true. And then the king of the underworld says, I'll wait. I'll have her. I'll bring her down. <coughs>
Approaching to dig the pit. And Islamuddin, as the 9,500 people turn to the chorus who are, who are playing the king, and they say, Your Highness, you must take the first swing into the ground with the pick. You must lift the first piece of earth. If you do, then the digging will be easy, the event will be auspicious. Then Islamuddin becomes the king who takes the um, takes the cushion, it's a spade, he swings it over his shoulder, it strikes the ground, and then we're in the underworld. And Islam Muddin is Jamraj, the king of the underworld, looking up, seeing the spade, and turning to the fairy women and saying, get that spade, get the king's spade. 
So Islam Ruddin, then you'll see him lift up the scarf over his shoulders and he becomes the fairy women who fly up and grab hold of the spade. And there's a tug of war between the king above the ground <laughs> and the fairy women below the ground. And eventually the fairy women, they get hold of the spade, they pull it under the ground. And as soon as they do, Islam Ruddin, as the fairy women, go over towards the king. And there's this wonderful moment where Islam Ruddin, as the fairy women, hands the spade to the king. And they switch roles. And suddenly, the dying are the fairy women handing the spade to the king. So Isra Muddin effectively hands the spade to himself during the course of this session. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Sees the bird. Islamuddin turns over his shoulders. Look, look at the bird. The bird is coming. I'll kill the bird. And so Islamuddin takes his bow as the, one of the brothers. And he loses the arrow from the bow. Up goes the arrow. It strikes the bird. <laughs> and as soon as it hits the bird, Islamuddin becomes the bird. And as soon as he becomes the bird, he doubles up. And he's, he's over and his hair is down. And he's singing, what, what have you done? You... You've killed me. I feel such pain. Mother Komola, help me. I was bringing a message from Komola. She is in danger, but now you have killed me. I have died. So in the first part of the section, here's the brother loosing an arrow. But as soon as the arrow hits the bird, he becomes the bird, dying, falling to the ground. <laughs> I'm gonna be my own boy, I'm gonna be my own boy. 
could not possibly have happened, um, advisor, translator, helper, supporter from the University of Dhaka, lecturer in music and drama. Please a huge round of applause for Dr.